Yes, as Jim said, I'm Deborah Tavares, and um, I, we're running about five different websites. And our main website is stopthecrime.net. And we're here to talk about the climate action plans, and we're going to get to that. But before we get to the climate action plans, you need to understand why the climate action plans are going to do to you what they're going to do and how this happened. Because this is very serious. Um, just a question, how many of you realize something's wrong? Pretty much all of you. Okay, that's good. Because you're going to realize there's a little more wrong than you may have thought. And what is important with this conversation is that you allow yourself to think about things you may not have heard before and um, that uh, you have an open mind. Uh, I will tell you that everything you're going to hear is fully documented, not only government documents, but uh, resolutions. And you're going to see a table over there, and at the end, when we have Q&A, I'll go over there and show you. Those are representative of just a few of the climate action plans that our research team has researched globally. And the climate action plans are global. They're in Iceland, they're in China, they're in Russia, they're in all of South America, and they're right here in Santa Rosa. And uh, so in order to understand how this takedown or to coup d'etat with these plans occurred here, you need to understand a little background. So that's what we're going to go over right now. And this is an hors d'oeuvre. This is not intended to explain the depth of this, because really I want you to be able to walk out with your brains still in your skull. <laughs> so, yeah. And I will tell you, I didn't know what I didn't know. And at first when I heard this, I was extremely skeptical. I didn't believe some of the things I heard. And uh, there was an instance when my husband and I uh, were at an, uh, an event, and some people came up and were talking to us about uh, a certain situation. And I told my husband, oh, that person belongs in a straitjacket. And c'est la vie, I, you deal with them. And I walked away. Well, this person appeared again a few months later at another meeting and was talking about the same topic. And um, I just thought it was absolutely nuts. And I'm not going to tell you what the topic is yet. But I'll tell you that I tasked my daughter to find out about this topic because I thought it was rather um, benign. And about a week or so later, at 3.30 in the morning, we received a phone call. And our daughter was sobbing on the other end of the line. And I thought that something had happened to one of our grandchildren. And she said, Mom, I looked into that topic that you told me about. And she said, it's real. It's real. So we had an emergency meeting with our family. Suddenly, uh, our retired life was starting to shape up and look very different. And um, I was extremely skeptical, but uh, I started to see that information. And for those of you that are taking notes, that topic ended up being uh, a, a, an encounter that I had here in Sonoma County with Ted Turner. And it is on YouTube, and you can see it. Uh, it's called Ted the Terrible Turner. It's on YouTube, Ted the Terrible Turner. I'm not going to go into that topic right now. Uh, that can come at a later meeting um, after you've heard what we have to say this evening and hopefully uh, done a little homework to understand our reality. So. Who's running America and the climate action plans? And what does the silent weapons system mean? What does that mean? OK. We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. I want you to think about that. This was former CIA director uh, William Casey. And he told us this. And I don't think people paid much attention. I certainly didn't. And this is on our website, stopthecrime.net. So as we look forward, uh, we look at who's running America. And again, this is only meant to be a small portion of this evening's topic. But it's important to understand we're not. 
we're not running America. And uh, in fact, globalists are running America. And when you look at Senate Report 93549, it's very, very clear. Um, our country, every year since 1933, has initiated a perpetual emergency war powers. Every year, it's reinitiated by every sitting president. And what that means is that when we're under a perpetual emergency powers act, the Constitution has been suspended. The Constitution has been suspended. We're under corporate law. We're not under constitutional law. And I can tell you, when I started to research this and investigate this, it was heartbreaking and depressing, and I felt very deceived and betrayed. But the documents tell us this. So this is one area that is going to take some time, I think, for people to digest. But I will just tell you, in order to maintain dictatorial control and authorization uh, that many divisions of government agencies, corporate government agencies, the executive branch, we know that decisions are coming from the executive branch by executive order. That is the way it was set up through this. And that explains why we are out of control and we don't have control. It's coming from the executive branch. And the Senate report sits on top of what occurred in 1933. We were never taught this in school, at least I wasn't. And I can tell you we're in a school right now. This is a school. And I thought how appropriate that we're in a school. And we get to talk about what we were not taught in school, because I know there are many of you out here right now that are fighting against Common Core. And you realize that this is going to completely change what our children learn in school, that they're going to learn in science that global warming is a reality and it's not. Uh, there are many um, aspects of Common Core that already happened to all of us when we were in school. So. How many of you have heard of what happened in 1933? Okay, well, you're going to hear about that now. Okay, what happened in 1933 is critical to understand what, we're, what our foundation is that is being built up to why we're here now, all knowing something's very wrong. Um, there was a, a bankruptcy that was concocted right after um, the Great Depression when many of our grandparents were still struggling to survive. And uh, what happened was they were expatriated. They had no knowledge of this. They certainly did not give their consent. America's gold was stolen by the international bankers. Our gold and silver was stolen. And um, we were collateralized as a nation against this concocted debt what was collateralized? Our property, our equity, our children, and our souls, our souls. So I won't get into how the souls become collateralized, collateralized because that's a different conversation. But you need to understand what moved forward from there, what the bankers um, created. And um, it's important to understand and take a look at Senate Report 93549. It is on StopTheCrime.net. It's on the home page. There's a large yellow section on StopTheCrime.net that will talk about who's running America. And this also you can download from the website. It talks about the bankruptcy of America and the corporate United States and the New World Order and how the Uniform Commercial Code replaced the United States Constitution. Extremely important to understand. We're a, a nation, we're USA Inc. And we're, we're running on a corporate structure. It has a very significant structure. It's based on contracts. And we're going to get into that here in a bit because some of these books on the table are contracts that have been signed for us and implemented for us. And you don't know about this because you don't need to. You don't need to. <laughs> they don't think that you need to. 
Now, um... Recently, there's been this video going around on the net called USA Inc. Depopulation and You with uh, Deborah Tavares. And uh, I think she has this site, Stop the Crime on there, she refers to it anyway. And she talks about in this video a document called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Um, I came over here to read this document and found it quite, quite interesting. So I'm going to go through the whole document here in this video. Uh, the original video, I'll put links to the USA Inc. Depopulation, and I want to thank Ashley Law for referring that video to me. It's uh, very disturbing, and this document is very disturbing as well. So I will include links to this and to the actual video. And it's, uh, it takes a little while to get through. It's 44 pages long, but there's also a lot of technical pages in here that I'm just going to scroll past. And if you care to read them, uh, yourself, pause the video to read those technical parts of it. But uh, thank you very much for listening, and hopefully you can get all the way through it. Okay, I wanted you to know that you don't have to read the 44 pages. You can actually go to StopTheCrime.net and listen to this wonderful man who created the YouTube so you can listen to him read it to you. And I would suggest that you read it, it is, or listen to it. It's one of the most important 44-page documents that you could ever read. And um, essentially, when you build upon the Senate Report 93549, which identifies all of you and me as enemies of the government, then you build upon the Silent Weapons document, which is a technical research manual that was put together in the 40s by the U.S. Air Force, Rockefeller, the International Bankers, and Harvard University. Uh, it is a manual that is um, intended for economic domination of the world and control of all energy. Now, energy is not what you think about, just PG&E and water and gas. It's your energy. We're all energy, and we're frequencies. And it's important to understand, they plan to control it all. Now, they say in the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document that when you have a few wealthy people with the methodologies and the goal to control all energy on the planet, and they have not told us, it is considered a declaration of war. And so the Silent Weapons document is a declaration of war of his book behold a pale horse and i would recommend that you read his book he was killed um, for all of the reasons that he understood what was occurring so uh, the silent weapons quiet wars document then builds upon the fact that you're all the enemy of the state and now war has been declared and i didn't believe that either <laughs> But I can tell you that the documents prove it. There are other documents beyond this as well. Okay, this is a quote out of the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document. And we have um, the availability uh, at a print shop in Roanoke Park. If any of you want, there's um, information on the greeting desk at the front door. And you can get a source document printed up like this that has a number of documents in it. Um, it's, I like it because it's large and you can make notes and tag it and use it. And uh, again, this is right out of the Silent Weapons document. It says an excerpt from page seven. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort so that the moat of ignorance in insulating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class, all of us. With such an initial handicap, even the brighter, lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extricating themselves from their assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintain some measure of social order peace and tranquility for the ruling upper class. Now the reason why the silent weapons document is so important is they wrote it and it's in their words. And um, 
What I found with the research group that I'm involved with, we want to read their documents. Um, this is what their plans are, and they tell us very bluntly. And they don't spare words, so you can see that they don't spare words. They're enslaving us by lack of knowledge. Um, this is um, a flyer uh, that we put together. It's really daunting because the Statue of Liberty is uh, surrounded by rising seas. This is going to happen to you, they tell you, if you do not implement the climate action plans. There will be sea level rising, there will be massive droughts, storm events, and hunger and disease and illness. If you do not accept willingly the climate action plans, this is what they tell you, and we'll see that inside the plans themselves. But again, for sake of not being able to maybe read that, um, everything the corporations and international bankers have been doing is one gigantic fraud, and all of it at our expense. Disinformation and manipulation by the international bankers corporate structure to centralize control of all people, land, energy, resources, technologies, and economies. We must expose the hidden secret of these corporations, universities, and institutions set to control all emerging technologies that will rebuild the world's transportation, civil, manufacturing, physical infrastructure with cyber infrastructure, computers, networks, and sensors. Now many of you are noticing the cameras everywhere. They're on all the street corners, they're up the freeways, they're on buildings, they're everywhere. There's sensors everywhere. The surveillance in the United States has already imprisoned us. You can go to, uh, you can look at Mount Weather, W-E-A-T-H-E-R. It is a uh, underground facility that was built outside of Washington, D.C., about 47 miles outside of Washington, D.C. in the 50s. And it houses the intention to incarcerate every single one of us with data collection and tracking and monitoring and sensors. So what you're hearing Edward Snowden say right now is not a new revelation at all. We were told in the silent weapons document exactly what they intended to do. And I'm going to just go over a couple of these things because I think it's vitally important that you understand the level of surveillance and tracking and monitoring that are planned. So on page eight of the silent weapons document, they talk about the general concepts but what they also talk about is the definition of a silent weapon system. And the definition, they say, is when a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts and adapts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, both psychological and economic, become too great and they crack up. They also tell us, therefore, the silent weapon system is a type of biological warfare. It attacks our vitality, our options, our mobility of individuals of a society by knowing. That's the data collection. That's Bluffdale, Utah. That's the cameras. That's all the tracking. That's the camera in your computer screen when you're sitting behind your computer. That is the flicker rate, and that's what's happening on your, on your televisions. Uh, everything that's coming wireless into your home. That's the wires within the walls of your home. It's all tracking. They talk about by knowing and understanding and manipulating and attacking our sources of natural and social energy and our physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. And they say that they will control it all. Now what is also very important is what Rothschild discovered about energy. He said he discovered there was a basic principle of power, influence, and control over people as applied in economics. The principle is very simple, quote, 
When you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. So we've had a great many people assume the position of power. And because we have been intentionally kept very busy, uh, we have given uh, our trust to those that represent us, and they don't. And as far as the data collection in this 44-page document, they talk about wanting to know, and keeping in mind, this was put together in the 40s. And it was adopted at the very first Bilderberg meeting in 1954 in the Netherlands. And they wanted to know back then, in the 40s, about each and every single one of you. The what, where, why, when, how, and who. They were going to look at general sources of information. They were going to look at telephone taps. This is in the 40s. Analyzing your garbage. Surveillance. Behavior of your children in school. They were also going to know how you lived based on the food that you ate, the shelter that you lived in, the clothes that you purchased, the transportation. They also would know uh, your phone bills because they would look at your itemized phone calls. They would know if you were married because they would look at your marriage certificates and birth certificates, etc. They would know your friends, your associations, your political affiliation. They would know your personal paper trail because they would know your banking account statements, your credit card purchases. Everything was tagged and planned to be tagged back in the 40s with the universal product code. This is no new news. We didn't read this 44-page document, and we weren't in a school that told us any of this. And you are right now. And you can pull these documents down for yourself, and I hope that you do. Because that's only how you're going to learn what we can do. Now, as I proceed, it's going to sound a little bit daunting. And it is. And if you're concerned, that's good. You should be. But what we are also going to talk about are solutions. And that's the most important thing. But we have to work our way to the solutions. And we can't get to solutions without understanding what the problem is. So I'm outlining the problem. So I don't want you to have your chin on your chest too soon. Um, not too soon. Um, they also talked in the silent weapons document that other methods of attaining data from us would be through our IRS forms. They said that if they gave us more write-off ability uh, by putting more detailed information in the IRS forms, they could track and monitor us further. They also are using welfare, social security, USDA food stamps, and grants and subsidies. They say this, the principle for these ploys, the citizen will almost always make the collection of information easy if he can operate on the free sandwich principle. Eat now and pay later. We're paying dearly now for the information that our parents gave them and we didn't know and they didn't know. But now you're learning, you're hearing in the documents. They also go on to talk about government sources via intimidation, the IRS, OSHA, the census, etc. They'll learn your patterns of living. Again, your belief systems, your contacts, how you vote, your friends, your strengths and weaknesses. And they tell us that um, they will keep the public ignorant. These are their words, this is in their document. They say they will, main access, they will maintain access to control and prices for feedback, and they will do shock testing. They will uh, implode the economy, and they will charge us more through shock testing. They would know how we're receiving all this information based on the receipts and the amount of drugs and alcohol that we use. That would show our mental stability at that time. So very important to understand the depths of this document. They say they will destroy our opportunities and they will allocate our opportunities. They will control the economic environment. They will control the availability of raw materials, our capital, our bank rates. They will control inflation of the currency. They will control possession of property. And they will control industrial capacity. 
This is all in the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document. And it goes into much more detail uh, than I have time to go into at this point. Literally, the Silent Weapons document could be an entire uh, discussion. So I just wanted you to understand, primarily, it's a declaration of war. And we're the enemy. Um, what is also extremely important to understand is that the federal and state governments are not real. They're privately owned corporations called governments. And we'll get into more information so you can check into that. Um, they're not real. They're privately owned corporations called governments. In other words, we have a system where we have banks and corporations that have been posing as legitimate governments, and they're not. It's USA Inc. In fact, it's Earth Inc. It's a corporate system. It's a corptocracy. And we were left out of that lesson plan. We didn't know. And um, it's important to understand our judicial system is, uh, serves the corporations, not us. That's why when we go to court, we generally don't prevail. And that's why the years that we spend in court and the money we spend in court, that money goes to the Federal Reserve, which has, of course, nothing to do with federal and has absolutely no reserve. Um, now, we must not consent to these lawless corporate statutes that were created to increase debt and enslave all of us, and that's what's happened. It's important to get a fundamental understanding of how this occurred, and we're going to have some references at the end uh, that I would encourage everyone to take a look at so that you understand. Now, only 10 days before John F. Kennedy was assassinated, he gave a speech at Columbia University. And he said this, and I'm going to read it because I think it's so important, and a lot of people missed this one. But it says, quote, for we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system that has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. We didn't hear that, we didn't read it, and we didn't know what that meant. Well, we're starting to feel more uncomfortable with what we all know is not real. And so when we think back and we look, we build upon history, and we've been denied history. The Silent Weapons document is a subversion of history. It is the creation of lawless laws. It is global manipulation of the population and enslavement by lack of knowledge. And unless we understand what our reality is, we're not going to be able to effectively oppose this. And that's what this is about this evening. This is the Iron Mountain Report. I recommend everybody listen to this document. I mean, read, listen to the documentary. It's a blueprint for tyranny. It came out of the 1960s when John F. Kennedy was president. Uh, they commissioned experts to look at what the United States would look like if we should transition out of a time of war into a golden age of peace. And Kennedy was assassinated prior to the completion of this report. And when this report was given to Johnson, he said because of the content, it's never to be given to the American people. Well, a whistleblower leaked this document, and the government said it was a hoax. And all of our parents believed it. We were all too young, I think, to know. But our parents believed it was a hoax if they were not too busy to even know that it existed at the time. But I can say to you that it is uh, 
a documentary that I would recommend everyone watch. In fact, we have some copies of the CD out on the desk. They're only $5. I would recommend that you buy it, make copies of it, get it out, show it to your neighbors. It's so important to understand this. And what is this? Well, the Iron Mountain Report talks about how they were going to subvert education, exactly what Orlean and others in this room have been fighting so hard against. It talks about what we're now dealing with the Obamacare. It talks about how they needed to invent a replacement for war. They needed something so horrific and so impactful that it would be believable globally and it would injure every single one of you equal to the effects of war. So they decided that that needed to be invented and they invented global warming. They said at the time that they would have to bring the ecology up to enough damage by damaging the ecology with the corporate structure. NASA and the corporations have damaged our world intentionally to seduce us into the false illusion that it's our fault, that we have to now believe in scarcity and we now have to reign in the population because there's too many of us. And that's what the report talks about, how they invented global warming and many other aspects as well. It is the second part I'm going to cut short because we don't have a lot of time. But again, in 1961, the Kennedy administration ordered a top-down secret study to determine the problems facing the United States if we were to go into a golden age of peace. The selection occurred, and there were 15 experts of various academic disciplines. They were selected for their expertise, and the first and last meetings were held in the underground nuclear survival retreat called Iron Mountain. This concluded in 1966, and as I said, Lyndon Johnson said because of the nature of the conclusions reached, that this was not to go out to the public, and the person who leaked it was at great risk. It was renounced as a hoax, and the Iron Mountain is hard to obtain, but it is on Stop the Crime and you still can get it. It looks deep into the soul of the New World Order, and it is a covert agenda to bring the world in America under the control of the United Nations. We see that happening now, and that is being implemented upon all of us without our knowledge or consent. As this documentary will prove beyond doubt, what you are about to hear is real. It is very disturbing, but it is real. It's also dangerous beyond belief, but it is real. It's frightening, and it's real. No person in America is safe, and the plans are coming to pass. It will talk about the rich men of the earth and how they're operating, and how we're being turned into a fascist police state. All the, all the things that we're seeing now, this report will tell you. There's no regard for ethics, morality, or consideration for life itself. And that is crucial to understand because we're good and decent people. We can't believe that there could be an agenda of this nature. At least I certainly didn't believe it. And when we flew back to Washington, D.C. a few years ago, um, we went to, my husband and I went to the records department because there was a resolution that I had received from a friend and it was about a paragraph and it said that um, the United States Congress had given the authority to the Department of Defense to use chemicals and biologicals on the American population without our knowledge or consent. And I thought this simply can't be real. This can't be real. They wouldn't use chemicals and biologicals on us. So we went to the records department and I was half hoping that they wouldn't get the document, but they did. The document is about four inches high and it's about half of the page of a eight and a half by 11 page. And um, we left when he was getting it for us and he called us uh, and told us it was ready to pick up and that he had marked certain sections in it that he thought we would be most interested in. He told us that the document was in effect from 1977 to 1988. 
And I thought, oh good, it's not in effect now, but they're certainly adding a lot of toxins to things. So I thought, well, what replaced it? The Genocide Treaty. The United States signed the Genocide Treaty in 1988. The only illegal aspect of the Genocide Treaty is one's own country cannot do harm or injure its own people. And we're not under a government. Think about that one. So we then have to talk about the bankruptcy of the United States. And uh, this is um, important because this is United States congressional record, March 17th of 1993. And this is um, Speaker James Traficant from Ohio addressing the House. And this is extremely important, what he tells us. And actually, he was put in prison for quite some time, for eight years. And they nearly killed him in prison. They wanted to silence him. And it is most important to understand what he said. And I'm going to read you just some excerpts of this because I think it's that important. He says, Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in the world's history, the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who would say it's a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9, 1933, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. The United States agencies, government offices, officers, and departments of the United States and federal government exist only in name only. The illusion. They're in name only. He goes on to tell us, and I will not read the entire, um, the entire um, congressional record, but I want to finish by saying, quote, he says, unwittingly, America has returned to its pre-American revolution, feudal roots, whereby all land is held by a sovereign, and common people had no rights to hold a loyal title of property. Now, I've heard this at various meetings, that we don't own our property. And I've left and I thought, what are they talking about? We don't have a loyal title? Well, what does that mean? Well, we own our property. We're paying property taxes. and. It seemed like we owned our property. They just haven't claimed it yet. And that's what's happening with UN Agenda 21 and the Wildlands Project. They're claiming their stuff. It goes on to tell us that once again, we the people are tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of the Federal Reserve Bank. We the people have exchanged one master for another. This has been going on over 80 years without the informed knowledge of the American people, without a voice protesting loud enough. Now it's easy to grasp why America is fundamentally bankrupt. Why don't more people own their properties outright? Why are 90% of Americans mortgaged to the hilt and have little or no assets after all debts and liabilities have been paid? Who? Why does it feel like you are working harder and harder and getting less and less? We are reaping what has been sown, and the results of our harvest is a painful bankruptcy and a foreclosure on American property, precious liberties, and the way of life. Few of our elected representatives in Washington, D.C. have dared to tell you the truth. The federal United States is bankrupt. Our children will inherit this unpayable debt and the tyranny to enforce paying it. And we're seeing that tyranny of enforcement of paying our debt coming by way of climate action plans, one Bay Area plans. This is the tyranny to pay back the debt. Concluding, America has been completely bankrupt in world leadership, financial credit, and its reputation for courage, vision, and human rights. 
This is a declared economic war, bankruptcy, economic slavery of the most corrupt order. Wake up, America, and take your country back. He concluded with that, and he was put in prison for about eight years.